Breaking Tom Holland new Marvel Sony Z reported. Let's see everything I want to say about this and check it out and see what it's all about. What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman, aka All Fires. Happy Wakanda Forever release date or eve, depending on where you are in the world. In a lot of places, mm. it comes out in the next 48 hours. So enjoy yourselves. I hope you guys have a great time. Really enjoy the film and I can't wait to see all of your reactions. In the meantime, mm. we have a ton of videos coming out over the next three days, at least two a day, but I had to bump this morning's video and immediately address all of the stuff in the news this morning about what's going on with Tom Holland, his renegotiation for his contract and all of these supposed appearances that people are talking about or rather arguing about on social media. There are several industry insiders going back and forth on where and when Tom Holland's going to show up and in which capacity, what the new terms of his negotiation are between Sony and Marvel. We're going to break it all down, the newest updates to Tom Holland's contract and according to some reports what's included. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button. We do daily Marvel content at the channel and that's all we do. Everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers and reviews to the occasional industry insider report like we're covering today and everything in between. So if that sort of thing's for you, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing PS5 giveaway. We are right around the corner from the next one. So again, if you want to be entered to win, all you got to do, hit the sub button, drop a comment, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video. We'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Okay, so to catch some of you guys up to speed as it really adds context to this morning's update, it was just over a week ago on November 1st that fellow YouTuber and industry insider Grace Randolph indicated she had heard that Sony, Disney, and Marvel were very close to finishing their next round of negotiations for Spider-Man films and co-production, and that presumably that would mean right around the corner would be the renegotiation for contracts with Tom Holland. A couple of days later, Sony themselves officially teased Huge surprises to come at the upcoming Brazilian CCXP next month. Mm -hmm. and this is the same place where they did a full panel and reveal for Spider-Man Far From Home almost four years ago. So there's an expectation there that there's going to be some sort of announcements given the fact we had a D23, a San Diego Comic-Con, a Marvel slate that extends now to 2026, but no site or official announcement of a Spider-Man 4. And that's where we find ourselves in the last 12 to 24 hours with smaller industry insiders and rumors starting to pop up that Tom Holland's new Spider-Man deal had been done. You might have already seen it on social media mm -hmm. with the follow-up details that it extends to Spider-Man 4 through 6, so a new trilogy in the MCU, Dang, awesome. Avengers King Dynasty, and Secret mm -hmm. Wars, which were obviously heavily anticipated. It's one of the biggest characters in the entire Marvel Universe. But that also it would include Disney Plus's Daredevil Born Again, with the slight caveat that Zendaya and Jacob had not signed on. Now, quite frankly, I don't expect to see Zendaya or Jacob in the upcoming film at all. I think that they are a part of Spider-Man's past. And it may come full circle at some point that him and Zendaya reunite, that him and MJ find their way back to each other. And I think that was heavily teased at the end of Spider-Man 3. But in the meantime, we're going to get to see a Peter Parker that's solo dolo and without any tech. I expect an arc that's going to be all about self-discovery. And so in that, it's only logical Zendaya and Jacob wouldn't be back for the film. And the same logic that would want to see him in Daredevil Born Again on Disney+, Plus, considering mm -hmm. that's going to be 18 episodes of yep. Daredevil and Matt Murdock running around New York. We already know there's a connection between the two characters from Spider-Man No Way Home. And again, we've heard the rumors that it may lead directly into Spider-Man 4 and a story with the villain Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio, who we'll see in Daredevil Born Again. But here came the rub with other industry insiders, more established at that, the writer from the Cosmic Circus, Alex P, that's at Alex from CC on Twitter, went ahead and tweeted out one of these smaller reports from a smaller scoopster and basically contradicted it. This is what he had to say. Holland's contract does not feature Disney Plus appearances, I'm being told. So if any quote-unquote deal is out there that includes an appearance in a Disney Plus show, chances are it isn't real. So first and foremost, Alex, thank you. I appreciate a little light policing in the rumor mill, especially as of late. It's gotten crazy on Instagram. People are just 
making stuff up every single day. And for reasons I just mentioned, there is some logic for why you would make this list, especially 18 episodes of Daredevil. Mm -hmm, yeah. again, with the rumors of how it's tied to Spider-Man 4, maybe you could see him in a post credit scene. But I think what Alex is alluding to here and is something that is very real. The only real red tape between Tom Holland and showing up in a Disney Plus show is not just the sharing agreements, it's how much you have to pay Tom Holland for an appearance. And point blank, that's why I argued recently that the news that Armor Wars could be moved to a film might be the first inkling we get an AI Tony Stark because RDJ is too expensive to show up on a Disney Plus show. There is a size and a scope and a budget that goes into these shows. And yes, you could honestly argue that there is a ton of A-class Marvel involved in those shows. Tom Hiddleston's Loki, for instance, in a ton of Avengers movies in the Infinity Saga, as well as Jonathan Major's King and how big he'll become in the MCU. And of course, Elizabeth Olsen, Scarlet Witch, she's been in all of the biggest Avengers films and some of the biggest Phase 4 Marvel films. But for some comparison, so you can understand the difference here, okay? Tom Holland was paid a rumored $10 million for Spider-Man No Way Home, and maybe more than that. Elizabeth Olsen was only paid $2 million, 20% oh, wow. of that to appear in Multiverse of Madness. And that is before the negotiations are going to go down now to renegotiate his contract in which he's going to be asking for more money per capita appearance. So in my opinion and from the outside looking in, taking the fandom and completely divorcing it from the bottom line and the business that these films are, I just believe that Tom Holland's per capita appearance fee will be too high to ever get him into a Disney Plus show. Is there a mm -hmm. chance he could show up for five seconds at the end of Daredevil in a post credit scene to tease Spider-Man 4? Yeah. Of course he could, but Absolutely. that's a lot different than having Tom Holland in an episode suited up as Spider-Man fighting alongside Daredevil, which ultimately, I think, from Sony's point of view, will want to withhold that until they actually get to the film. Mm -hmm. I will also go on to mention, though, just from a purely logical standpoint and what's going on with Sony, and all of a sudden, all these rumors flooding about Sony, Marvel mm -hmm. negotiations, Tom Holland, and this basically after the rumor mill surrounding Spider-Man 4 had pretty much laid dormant for most of the year, and especially at the height of Marvel announcements between San Diego Comic-Con and D23, there was no word on Spider-Man at all. I do anticipate some official updates coming on this and soon, especially as the cycle just doesn't want to let this go. Mm -hmm. But what I mentioned in a separate video, in case you missed it, and I want to bring it up a couple of times, because as an analyst myself of what goes on in the industry, I'm trying to look ahead here for when the most likely release for Spider-Man 4 is. Now, I know there's been rumors of summer 2024, but more likely the case when Marvel moved Blade from the end of next year to sometime in 2024. They left an eight or nine month gap between when the Marvels come out next summer and when we finally get Captain America New World Order in May. But if there's any truth to the rumors that they would include Kingpin as a villain or an extension of what's going on in Daredevil Born Again, Remember, Born Again being 18 episodes means, at the very least, it'll run for very close to four months. Even if they started mm -hmm. in January, it won't be done till the end of April, or the beginning of May, when New World Order comes out. Then the real rub becomes, considering the IP rights for how it was negotiated when Sony bought Spider-Man, they've got to keep pumping Spider-Man movies out every two years or so. If yep. they were to push it back to late 2024, not only would we get four or five Marvel movies in nine months, after not having a single one for the previous nine months, it would be squished in between two huge Marvel releases already, but they've got to get it out. So here's, here's what I'm saying, the basic caveat is, they are a lot more flexible with what they can do with Spider-Man and releasing Spider-Man 4 if Daredevil is not basically a lead-in and a lead-up to the show. Yes, I've heard the rumors, but with a nine-month gap on the schedule between next summer and almost summer of 2024, they could go ahead and push forward production on this, start shooting next year and have the movie out by, say, February or March of 2024, which would slot nicely into Marvel's gap. Again... The only rub would be that wouldn't include a Daredevil run-up, but those are such early, early rumors, and I think it's very likely, instead of a Daredevil inclusion, they may look to go that route with the symbiote, hence the post credit scene in Spider-Man No Way Home, leaving a piece of Tom Hardy's Venom over here in the MCU. And you guys let me know all your thoughts down below, how hyped you are for Spider-Man 4, what you want to see from the film, and I know we're all calling for a Daredevil Spider-Man mm -hmm. team-up, but... Be patient, guys. It's definitely coming. Let me know all your thoughts down below quickly. Let's jump into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. We are still giving away PlayStation 5s. The next milestone happens to be a million subscribers, which we are right around the corner from. I anticipate hitting that before the end of the year. 
depending on how YouTube's algorithm goes. But you can help me do that. You can help me hit my lifelong goal of a million subscribers and be entered to win a PlayStation uh, at the same exact time. All you have to do, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, because it's truly random. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos, the same way we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you like today's video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. My name's Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I Am Fighters. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes under the name All Fires. And while I sincerely appreciate you checking my music out, thanks for checking this channel out. Stick around, we got another video coming later today. Peace. Yeah, please subscribe, like this video, and see you guys. Bye.